God Connects. Confession. Admitting that we did something wrong. That makes us all uncomfortable. We're all sinners. Me too. Now while most of us know that about ourselves, we still struggle admitting that to others. We can go to great lengths to conceal the fact that we are sinners. We can't hide this ugly truth from God. You see, when the law of God accuses us, it's awful. It's like a police interrogation. The law of God, His rules of right and wrong, accuses and exposes the sinner within us all. We may attempt to lie to ourselves, but it doesn't work. The law of God ultimately exposes our darkness within. Confessing our sins is painful. We wiggle, we squirm, we fear. What we can't realize is the knowledge of what lies on the other side of our fear and confession. If you confess your crimes to a cop, you well could end up in the joint. But if you repent, that means to turn from your sin and confess your sins to God, the outcome is the complete opposite. A new reality of forgiveness and grace awaits you. Forgiveness for our sins brings us new life and a fresh start. It's an amazing wonder that can only be experienced after we confess our sin. Forgiveness is a magnificent and powerful gift. In the church, we call this forgiveness absolution. We confess our sins and the pastor says, in his stead and by his command, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now to be clear, it's not the pastor himself forgiving people, but God through his ministry. The reformer Martin Luther wrote that this is as valid and certain in heaven also as if Christ our dear Lord dealt with us himself. Absolution is a powerful gift indeed, for we know that we are absolutely forgiven. The church continues to practice this because Christ himself established it. After the death and resurrection of Jesus, he entrusted and empowered his church with special responsibility and power. Jesus said, if you forgive the sins of anyone, they're forgiven. If you withhold the forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. We call this unique authority the Office of the Keys. So it makes sense. Forgiveness and the grace of God feels amazing. But what's with this part about withholding forgiveness of sin? Why would a pastor or the church do that? The Bible tells us, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's called excommunication. You see, when a person is confronted and made aware of his or her sin, as pointed out by the church, and refuses to repent, the sins are not forgiven by God. The door to heaven is locked in their face. To keep unrepentant people from deceiving themselves into thinking that they're in good standing with God, Jesus himself commands his church to withhold his forgiveness. The purpose of this is not to punish the person who refuses to repent, but rather to help them realize that the door to God is locked. While it might not feel like it, this is actually the most loving thing we can do as Christians for them. Otherwise, the person might not ever recognize the sin before God and the ultimate consequence of their sin, hell. We may or may not recognize that our unrepented sins add up and, and they weigh us down with the overwhelming burden of guilt. This will eventually crush us spiritually and only when we repent are we relieved from that pressure of sin. A great question to ask ourselves honestly is, what does repented sin look like? Well, there are really three parts. The first is to acknowledge that what we have done is wrong. Secondly, we believe that Christ has the power to forgive this sin, and he has. And the third is the honest effort to turn away from that sin that we're struggling with. While confession can look like a very public act, it's actually very personal and a private matter between the sinner and Christ. Maybe this conjures up thoughts of a private confessional. 
Perhaps other churches might even offer different avenues to receive forgiveness. They might even require that something be done to earn it. But this is about mercy. We cannot work off our sins against God with our own effort. God gives us His forgiveness as a gift. In the end, we should see that confession and absolution, they're not a burdensome ritual, but a gift. When we're troubled by our failures and sins, we're able to confess whatever they may be. And confession and absolution are God's way of assuring us that we live in His forgiving presence.